It's Wednesday, September 13th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. There's a small, mostly industrial Metro East village with a French name, Sojé. That's if you ask the family it's named after. If you ask others in the St. Louis area, you'll probably get a slightly different answer. I've heard so gay, so jay, sauget, you know, all different kinds of renditions. It's being French, it's a little bit hard to pronounce. Coming up, St. Louis Public Radio's Will Bauer figures out how to pronounce the name of that Metro East village. The Missouri State Board of Education is asking for a 12% increase in the K through 12 funding formula. As St. Louis Public Radio's Brian Moline reports, it would be phased in over two years. The state's funding formula starts by calculating how much money it takes to educate a single student. That number has been just under $6,400 since 2020. Carrie Monsis, Deputy Commissioner of the Division of Administrative and Financial Services, says the Department of Education wants to increase that. Half of it goes into the first uh, fiscal year request, the other half goes into the second in terms of the increase. So for next year, FY25, it would be 6760 and then the following year it would be 7145 That would cost the state an additional $120 million over two years. The board voted unanimously to submit the request to the governor's office. I'm Brian Moline, St. Louis Public Radio. The St. Louis County Council is one step closer to passing legislation to give Boeing tax breaks for its $1.8 billion expansion in North County. Company leaders say the project would create 500 jobs when completed. Boeing would get a 50 percent reduction in real estate and personal property taxes for 10 years, which is estimated to save it $155 million. Councilwoman and bill sponsor Rita Hurd Days says part of the expansion will include her district. This is our largest employer in St. Louis County, and we need to provide them the resources they need to compete. And so it's, it's, it's that simple. The bill's final approval could come next week. The leader of the Missouri Department of Social Services is hoping a St. Louis backlog of potential child abuse and neglect cases can be cleared within a year. But as St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports, getting that done will require hiring more people. In the area that includes St. Louis and St. Louis County, there are roughly 6,000 cases of child abuse or neglect that remain open after 45 days. But during a House committee hearing on Tuesday, Department of Social Services Director Robert Nodell says he's seeing positive trends. So that number of overdue reports is being reduced. And, you know, we envision, you know, hopefully within the next year uh, that being eliminated. But even though his agency is hiring more investigators, Nodell cautioned that they will still need to be trained. And Nodell has said that hiring investigators in St. Louis is challenging, especially with a starting salary of around $43,000 a year. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. A St. Louis area appellate judge has been tapped to serve on the Missouri Supreme Court. Governor Mike Parson is appointing chief judge of the Missouri Court of Appeals Eastern District, Kelly Broniak, to the state's high court. She calls that Supreme Court nod a dream come true. I understand that my responsibility as a member of the court is to decide the important cases that come before the court conscientiously, promptly, and consistently with the law as written. Broniak will be sworn in within the next 30 days. She will replace George W. Draper III, who retired last month just before turning 70. That's the statutory age for retirement from the court. Riverview Gardens High School is shifting to online learning today and canceling this weekend's homecoming events. The district's decision follows several fights yesterday at the school. Police came in to break up the altercations. A parade, pep rally, and dance slated for Saturday are all canceled. Saturday's homecoming football game is still on, but only players, coaches, officials, and parents can watch it in person. The district announced the decision in a letter to parents and staff. A report on the St. Louis music scene recommends stronger government support for a sector that pumps more than $2 billion into the economy annually. The Regional Arts Commission and Kranzberg Arts Foundation funded the Sound Diplomacy Study. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports. Professional music helps support nearly 30,000 jobs in the St. Louis region. But many in the field say a lack of professional opportunities makes full-time careers in the music business difficult for artists who remain in St. Louis. 
Reed Wick is a New Orleans musician who manages artist relations for the Grammys. Backstage at Music at the Intersection, he says music creates lots of jobs, and not just for the people on stage. It extends way beyond the artist manager, the booking agent, the venue people, but catering staff, the people who deal with parking and security. It's the music that creates these opportunities for all these jobs to happen. The report calls for a region-wide music-based tourism strategy and changes in city regulations to make it easier to stage events. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. Sandwiched between Cahokia Heights and East St. Louis lies a small, mostly industrial, Metro East village, Soje. That's if you ask the family it's named after. If you ask others in the St. Louis area, you could get a slightly different answer. St. Louis Public Radio's Will Bauer asks, what's the right way to pronounce it? To gauge how everyday residents pronounce the name of that village, I started at a Gateway Grizzlies game. The Grizzlies are an independent baseball team headquartered in the village. On this weeknight evening, I ran into people mostly from the Metro East. Here's how they pronounced it. Sauge. Sauge, Illinois. Sauge. 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 Yeah. Sauge. 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 Uh, but throughout my time here, it's I've heard a lot of different things. So. And while all those variants are close, there's one that's more correct. Just listen to the mayor. Rich Soje Jr., mayor of Village of Soje. Did you catch the difference between the way he said it and some of the others? Soje, not Soje or Soje. Soje. Rich has been the mayor since 2003, and yes, the village is named after his family. His grandfather, Leo, was the first village president back in the 1920s. And even though the family has been running the village for over 100 years, Rich says he's no stranger to mangled pronunciations of his last name. I mean, I've heard so gay, so jay, sauget, you know, all different kinds of renditions. It's Being French, it's a little bit hard to pronounce, but uh, I mean, I, I hear probably the most is so jay. And uh, so whenever somebody calls, I just, I just answer too. <laughs> If Rich had to guess, he says about 5% of all who attempt nail the pronunciation. The village is home to only about 150 people that live on three streets in the same part of town. I asked Rich if those residents get it right more often. Uh, (laughs) you know, I don't know know if I ever even uh, hear them say it. I mean, we're all so close. We're first name basis with everything here. But they would be in the higher uh, echelon of probably pronouncing it correctly. But even if he hears it incorrectly, Rich says he doesn't bother correcting them. And as many St. Louisans well know, Rich's last name is definitely not the only French name that's said slightly differently than a Frenchman would say. There's Crevecourt, De Bolivar, Laclede, and Chouteau. The family says Chouteau. That's Jane Chouteau. Her great-great-great-great-grandfather was René Auguste Chouteau, one of the original founders of the St. Louis settlement. The avenue that runs parallel to Interstate 64 is indeed named after him. And if it's not obvious, her family says their last name one way, even though many St. Louisans would say it another. But there is a lot of evidence that the pronunciation that in the 18th century would have been Choto, as evidenced by the Lewis and Clark journals. The change between Choto and Chouteau came during the time of Napoleon. The emperor weeded out some French pronunciations. And just like Rich Sojé, Jane says she doesn't police the pronunciation of her last name. In her view, languages evolve. It's silly. I mean, who cares how it's pronounced? You know, who cares about codification of the French? Why well, the French care very much about the codification of the French language, but I don't care how it's pronounced. Speaking of the French, Lionel Couillet follows the same logic. He's a French professor at Washington University. He's been living in the area for more than 20 years. St. Louisans are right to pronounce it the way they feel comfortable pronouncing it. Uh, So I think these words have been appropriated into the English language. And sometimes, he says, that means these words come with different sounds. Couillet says recently he didn't quite understand his son's friend, who'd gotten agis for his roast beef sandwich. And then I understood, oh, au jus, an au jus roast beef sandwich. I will never correct (laughs) uh, my son's friend, you know, that this is, this is, this is beautiful. (laughs) Odious. But what does all of that mean? 
the Soje family does say the village one way, but plenty of others say Soje or Soje. The experts, family or academic, say it's not that big of a deal. But remember, they can all agree. It's definitely not Saget. In Soje, I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.